In our current message series, we've been asking a very simple but meaningful question. Who is in front of you? Meaning, specifically, as we ask this question, it's got the idea that, that we have this opportunity right now to impact the people in our lives, our family, our friends, the people in our lives that we see every day. Who is in front of you? Who needs you? Who can you impact right now? Through a study of the book of Ruth with this question, we first come to determine that we are not going to back down from the people in our lives. We know that some of the people right in front of us, they are messy, they are difficult, they are a lot of work. Let's be honest, with COVID-19 right now in our world, the world is messy and, and a bit difficult, right? But we're not going to back down from being love and support. Who is in your life? Who needs you? Then last week, we recognized the impact that we could make in someone's life right now. This moment, this moment you find yourself in, it matters. Remember, God works through little, everyday moments of grace. You can make an impact. And yes, you may be stuck at home in your house, but these little moments of grace, these little moments mean so much right now you can make a difference. In the book of Ruth, we now come to kind of the big moment in the book of Ruth. This is the moment where so much is on the line. For Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz, this is game time. Through Ruth's actions, we're going to see what we really need to invest if we're going to be a part of finding life change, both for ourselves and our own lives, but also for the lives of others, those people who are there in front of us that we want to impact, that we can impact, that hopefully we are present and aware enough to have a voice in their lives. This is the thing, that thing that is needed that we see in Ruth to impact their lives. It is vulnerability. Now, vulnerability. Does anyone actually in this world ever like to be or to feel vulnerable? Think right now about the New England area. For the first time in a long time, New England is vulnerable, right? They've had like 20 years of quarterback security, and now Tom Brady has moved south, and they join the world of the Bills and the Jets fans. New England, we don't like feeling vulnerable either, but welcome to our world. Welcome. Welcome, New England. Right now, due to COVID-19, a lot of us and I don't want to speak for you, but probably all of us, right? We feel vulnerable right now. I had this thought. And what I'm about to share, yes, I'm being a little silly, but as we think about this, I think you'll find that it's very true. What is the biggest story of COVID-19? Well, as we're starting to, to realize things about this and to know more and more about the details, we, we've discovered how it spreads and, and how our body will respond. And so less and less has become a mystery, except one thing, one big overall question. Why are we all buying so much toilet paper? For real, why do we need so much toilet paper? Now this has been a bit of a joke, right? And that's okay, sure it has. We laugh about it, and at times like this, we need some things to laugh about. So it's okay to laugh at the fact that we're all buying toilet paper. And we do laugh about it, but at the same time, who hasn't actually thought to themselves, and, and thought to themselves for real, this is funny, but do I actually have enough toilet paper? I'm not sure. Admit it, every time you go to the store, you check. You check the toilet paper aisle. You do, don't you? You check. You think, well, what's a few extra rolls possibly going to hurt? I do it. You bet I do it. In fact, our church put together some care packages inside each care package. Guess what was included? A roll of toilet paper. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a minute. How do, how do I get, how do I sign up for one of those care packages? Why toilet paper? Well, it may be funny, but is there anything more vulnerable than not having enough toilet paper? And when we further think about it right now, there is so much in our lives, so much right now that is out of our control. This may be one of the few small things that we can control. No one wants to be vulnerable, but what we're going to learn today is how important vulnerability is to love and to our desire 
to impact someone else's life. When we are vulnerable, we are powerful. Let me say that to you. When you are vulnerable to the ones that you love, to those people right there before you, you are powerful. Let's see what happens as we continue in the book of Ruth. We're going to be looking at chapter 3. We're going to read all 18 verses. And at this moment, here's a little bit of the backstory that comes into chapter 3. Naomi is from Bethlehem, and during a famine, her family moved away from Bethlehem to a foreign land. There, her sons got married, but before too long, unfortunately, she lost her husband and her two only sons. So she returned home to Bethlehem, supported only by one of her daughters-in-law, Ruth. Naomi is, rightly so, bitter and dark by what has happened to her. But under Ruth's grace, she's starting to turn around. Ruth has been providing for them both by working in a neighbor's field, a man named Boaz, who has been very kind to them. Boaz has further provided for them. He has kept them safe, and he has treated them very, very well. And so now we look at Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3, starting with verse 1. This is what it says. One day Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you, where you will be well provided for. Now, Boaz, with whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying, Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. Verse 5, I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and laid down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned, and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. Verse 10. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am a guardian redeemer for our family, there is another who is more closely related than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good. Let him redeem you. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognized, and he said, No one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, bring me the shawl you are wearing and and hold it out. When she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley and placed the bundle on her. Then he went back to town. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi, asked, how did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her and added, he gave me these six measures of barley saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. For the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. There are certain places that I feel incredibly vulnerable walking into. Places that just, I never feel comfortable at. Car dealerships, jewelry stores, fancy restaurants, gyms, just to name a few. Super vulnerable whenever I go to these places. Whenever I'm there, I always have that nagging feeling of, what am I doing here? I feel out of place. I feel like everybody's looking at me. I feel like I don't know how to interact. What am I supposed to say, do? And I kind of feel like everybody here is probably trying to take advantage of me in one way, shape, or form, right? And you just feel super under a microscope and, and vulnerable. Now, when I go into those places, sure, I do my research. I know I am there and what I want, but unfortunately, most of my research has only taught me that I have no idea what I'm talking about and that I know absolutely nothing. You can see when I enter a place, I can see the light go on in salespeople's eyes. Oh, look at this guy. Easy target 
right there. Got him. Got this guy. Ruth must have felt incredibly vulnerable walking into this situation, right? Naomi has this plan for Ruth to connect with Boaz, but wow, wow, does it say, it just sound uncomfortable to say the least. Go get yourself cleaned up. After Boaz has basically partied a little bit, and that's what they're doing. They're, they're celebrating the harvest in this moment, right? After he's done that and has gone to sleep, go lay at his feet, uncover his feet. This is just weird. Lay at his feet and wait. Now, I've done my research on this moment. It is odd. What exactly happened here is not often agreed upon. But with what we know of the character of Ruth and Boaz, I am pretty sure that nothing improper in this moment took place. But wow, no matter what happened, we recognize that Ruth put herself in an incredibly vulnerable position. Go sleep at some guy's feet late at night when he may have just partied. Go do that. She is completely at Boaz's mercy. Thankfully, Boaz is an incredibly good guy. But as we look at this, we have to ask ourselves, why would Ruth do this? Why go through with this very brazen plan? Why allow herself to be put in such a vulnerable place? The answer is very simple. Love. Love. C.S. Lewis said, to love at all is to be vulnerable. Naomi and Ruth, I believe there is love there, and Ruth specifically loves Naomi. Ruth wants to help Naomi. She wants to change her heart. She wants to care for her. She wants to bless her. What does that take? It takes vulnerability. Who makes us the most vulnerable? Those that we love. I remember the vulnerable moments of declaring my love for my wife, Julie. Vulnerable moments. Would she accept my love? Would she return my love? Would she cherish and honor my love? And is there anything more vulnerable than having a child? The vulnerability my children make me feel every single day, all because I love them, I want what's best for them, I am worried about their future and concerned and want to pour into them. Vulnerability. Ruth loved Naomi, and Ruth wanted to change her heart. What would that take? Vulnerability. Open your heart. Be honest with your feelings. When you can, step out with your actions, actions that represent the truth of your faith, your beliefs, your heart. This is how we impact people. Author Haruki Murakami said it like this, and I, I love this quote. He said, what happens when people open their hearts? What happens when people open their hearts? They get better. They get better. We've been asking this question, who is in front of you? Those people in your life that you're seeking to impact, they need you, and you care for them. And whatever they bring to the table, yes, you care for them. And you want to make an impact, then I encourage you to allow yourself to be vulnerable. Be vulnerable to who is in front of you. Right now, we are all, we are all right now vulnerable. No one needs you to have all the answers. I hope you know that and understand that. No one expects you to have all the answers. In fact, if you act like you have it all together right now in our world, in our culture, in our community, you're completely unrelatable. To those who need you, just be vulnerable with them. In your weakness, they simply need your support, your trust, and your faithfulness. I love this. Bear Grylls, and yes, we're quoting Bear Grylls. He said this about us, about Americans. He said, Americans are cool. If you show just a hint of vulnerability, they respond so much. They'll pat you on the arm and say, hey, kid, you're all right. For the person in front of you right now, just be vulnerable. Just be vulnerable. Be you. Open your heart to them. Communicate your love and your feelings and step out for them. It is vulnerable, but that is how you open their heart. That is how you change it. Be vulnerable. 
And so we understand Ruth's vulnerability for Naomi. We see that as she continues in this vulnerability, she begins to change Naomi's heart. That begins to take place. We see that happen. But we see that Ruth was vulnerable for Naomi, but she was most specifically vulnerable to Boaz. And there is something else very powerful here. Remember, this is Naomi's plan. Naomi's plan for Ruth to be vulnerable to Boaz. And that all depends upon the fact that Boaz is family. He is their guardian redeemer. Now, first, before we get into this, please understand and remember, Ruth is a foreigner who married into this family. So she and Boaz are not like second cousins here or something. Like this is not going to be weird. This is okay. So relax. This relationship is fine. But Boaz is connected to Ruth and Naomi, a guardian redeemer. That is a legal term for someone who is supposed to redeem a family member in difficulty. In this specific moment, they're talking about marriage, really, about about someone marrying Ruth, caring for her and producing an heir for her and Naomi. And, And there's words of marriage and protection all in this act between Ruth and Boaz of him covering her with with his blanket and that kind of thing. There's that understanding of marriage is at play here. Naomi is incredibly wise. She is the one who came up with this plan. She's incredibly wise. Maybe Ruth doesn't fully understand all that is happening here, but Naomi does. She has placed Ruth's light in the hands of someone who is kind and caring, someone who is graceful and true, but even more so, she has placed Ruth into the hands of her redeemer. I encourage us to remember this. It is always safe to be vulnerable in the hands of your Redeemer. It is always safe to be vulnerable in the hands of your Redeemer. We are all vulnerable right now. Not one of us hasn't felt the impact of COVID-19. Not one of us. We are vulnerable at work. We're vulnerable at the store, in our homes. Whenever I go out, I see it in people's eyes. I see it in their eyes. Vulnerability. They are vulnerable. We are vulnerable. We're afraid for our health, for our jobs, for our bank accounts, for our bills and how we'll pay them. We are, we are afraid for our families. We're afraid for our future. We feel vulnerable. We worry about not just if we're going to have COVID-19, but if we we unknowingly have it already and are spreading it to others. We take precautions, we take steps, but we simply, we simply don't know. We are all vulnerable right now. But some of us, some of us are vulnerable and alone. And others of us are just as vulnerable. But we know that our lives and futures are are in the hands of our Redeemer. It is always safe to be vulnerable in the hands of your Redeemer. We believe in God the Father, in Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit working in our lives. We believe God created the world, has mastery over the world, and is an ever-present source of power, of grace, of forgiveness, and of love. We know that we are not alone. Our lives have been placed in the hands of someone who is gentle and kind, forgiving and loving. Our lives have been placed in the hands of our Redeemer. In my life at many points, I have felt vulnerable. When my mother first contracted cancer to when God eventually took her home. Holding my first child, knowing my life was forever changed. Sitting in the doctor's office, getting questionable news about the state of my son's heart. Laying on a hospital bed, watching my blood count drop, feeling weaker and weaker by the moment. So many moments when I have felt vulnerable, but never a moment when I have been alone. My life is in the hands of my Redeemer. Are you feeling alone right now. You don't have to be. Believe in God. Have faith in Jesus Christ, his son. Invite his spirit into your life. Would you join me in prayer? Father in heaven, God above, God, I believe in you and I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit living, dwelling in my life. God, I thank you that I am not alone. I am thankful that, God, you are loving and caring and and gracious and kind and, and everything that I would want to be, that I would want to be vulnerable in. You are that, God. You are my Redeemer. God, I pray over those who may not know your truth. God, may they place their faith in you. Because, God, we believe in you. We believe that you created this world. We believe that your son Jesus Christ came into this world, that he died for us, and that, God, you had the power over sin and death to bring him back from the dead. And just like you have that power, you have that power in our own lives to forgive us, to make us new, and to allow us to come into communion, to connection, and to relationship with you. And so, God, forgive us. Come and be a part of our lives. Our faith is in you. Place your Holy Spirit inside of us, and God, may we feel your spirit, your presence, and may we know, God, that we are never alone. God, right now there are people in our lives, people who stand for us, that we want to impact. There are family, our friends, our neighbors, those around us who are struggling right now in a very, honestly, scary situation. God, allow us to be vulnerable with them. Allow them to see our vulnerability, but in that, to see us take steps of love and of care and of grace, to step out and to be vulnerable for them, and in that way, to change our hearts and to change theirs as well. Give us that encouragement. Give us that strength, God. May we step forward for the people who are right there in front of us. And through it all, God, may we find our strength in you, our God above, our Redeemer, in whom we place our lives right there in your hands, God. Be with us now. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we close, let's remember the truths of our beliefs that strengthen us in this moment of vulnerability. Would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We hope that you know that here at North Collins Wesley Church, you have a community that is that is here to support, to love, to care for you, to be vulnerable with you. If you have a need, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Know that we love you and are praying for you. Have a wonderful week. We hope that someday soon we get to connect with you. Thank you, everybody.